which is a, if not proficiency in Chinese, no doubt, it's a very clear. Uh, if only learning Tibetan and English, many times we politicalize the problem. If you only study Chinese and English, you will lose your identity very clearly. Uh, then uh, I interviewed and met many religious teachers uh, through uh, my work. The religious teachers asking bilingual education research how to make the language choice. Who should make the decision? Society, principal, parents, or kids themselves. Uh, we're in the very uh, cusp of the uh, approach. Uh, but the many uh, experts in the Chinese educa minority education experts or uh, Tibetan or other minority education experts, they're not, until today, not clear. They made 26 kind definition of the minority education. Not clear yet. So this, this ununified the uh, theory misleading the reality of the Tibetan education. Uh, many principles uh, point out by the top of the go uh, level of the government. For example, uh, Last year, in my hometown, they appointed a, a, a Chinese, a local Chinese hand to be a principal in the school. Before, it's a, the model is the te they teaching the Tibetan from grade one, and then te they teaching the Chinese after grade three. When they get to, he got that position, he certainly changed without thinking the social context. OK. Now, from this uh, September of the year, we start to teach the Chinese with uh, grade one. And then we te will teach the Tibetan after grade four, three. And then the village, villagers are so angry, but they don't have an <coughs> idea where to go, where to ask. How to change this kind of situation? And then I phoned them. Organize a committee at the village to go to the county level, ask them. And then they went. Says, when the, the county uh, education bureau, bureau says, we never made this cha change. And then the village came back to that principal. This kind of struggle, and uh, not a struggle, real struggle, this kind of a movement to start in a village by uh, themselves. <coughs> um, by uh, about the sediments, and uh, a few, uh, also there are a few Chinese minority education experts really uh, thinking we shouldn't dominate their curriculum. A few of us. I don't know, I'm not sure in Beijing or any other place, but in Western uh, province, there are few Chinese scholars thinking that, but they're still uh, arguing. Uh, this argument is not finished yet. For example, they made, uh, they made a policy for the curriculum reform. They, uh, one is national curriculum, local curriculum, and the school curriculum. And then they say national curriculum, there's no, no argument. Everybody had to, everywhere, everywhere in China must be teach that. At the local level, they said, oh, now you have a chance, you, can, you could teach your culture by your language. 
Okay. The, the move from top level is okay. Now, in the prefecture level, they're still arguing. A few Chinese <laughs> scholars and the Tibetan and also the other group of Chinese scholars said, let them teach. Uh, they're only their culture and the language, by their language. But the other group said, you only could take, put your cultural content in the 15% to the 25. Some group says only 50. Never go 90 or 100 or 80%. This, this argument uh, continues now, uh, not clear yet. And this is a school, a general school uh, educational issues. And then some, uh, from last year, or some many places uh, start uh, uh, 2006, they uh, we put the English. Now it's in the teaching the three languages in the primary school. Uh, the many places, for example, Tianzhu in the Bali, in Tibetan we call Bali. There are many parents gave up le learning the Tibetan to transfer into the uh, English and the Chinese school. That's really affected the parents' attitude. For example, they closed the Shifan last few years. And this. And then I will move on to the second part. It's a historical review. Uh, about the Tibetan language. Um, but you know, uh, I found this book. This book is uh, called from 1949 to 2005. So all the political decisions made the talk of the Beijing. The Beijing. Uh, we, when we looking at this book, how do they start the making the policy and how do they change their policy by the situation changing? And then, <coughs> the Ben Chen Lama, made, uh, the many people might know this, uh, the, uh, this character, this uh, quotation. Um, this was the first Tibetan leader or Tibetan people who strongly criticized their policy. Um, <coughs> the main reason is he asking that all level of government in Tibet needs to use the language of Tibetan. And then he says, finally he said, we don't want our language to be a folk language. <coughs> this is his uh, uh, part. And then the 1980, 1980, they, uh, this, in this book, they made a, a decision where it says, uh, Chinese people, who, Han people who live work and live in Tibet, who must be learning Tibet language and literacy. Otherwise, you can't uh, make good service for Tibetan people. 